to us all the time. You have your Bibles. You got to turn to Second Chronicles, chapter seven. Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse twelve. I don't know if I'll pronounce all the words right, but I want to say that the Lord's laid a message in my heart for probably two or three weeks, and uh, we just come to obey Him tonight and let God, let God be God and uh, let Him have His way in the service, and uh, we love everybody here. We. Thank God for everybody that has came out tonight. We're serving a good God. And he's been good to us down through the years. Way be far better to me than I have been to Him. And I love Him and I appreciate Him tonight, church. But 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by, my, by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. And then, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Before we go any further, we're going to read a little further here, but when he said up there in verse 12, he said, I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. The house he was talking about, what I get out of this is this house. Amen. This house. He chose Brother Gene for a house of sacrifice. Amen. Then we're going down here, and where we was reading that here, and he said, "My and my and now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayers that is made in this place. This place. The prayers that is made that's coming out of this house. He said, For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetual. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then, there's then again, I want you to remember then. Yeah. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenant with David thy father, saying there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statues and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of the, my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be ast astonishment, to every one that passes by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this house, and unto this land, and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. 
Give the Lord a hand and you can be seated. My thought tonight is then. Then. When we go back and read, uh, uh, listen to what the, the Lord said here. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Imagine how good God is to us, church. If He would shut it up, Brother Gene, His blessings. We want them. But what, what, what are we doing down through the week? Not just on, uh, uh, Brother Gene, I thought was going to just run with it tonight. But that's all right. If he would, it had been all right. Like I said, it's not about me. I want God to get me. I prayed, went back there today and I prayed. I said, Lord, get me out of the way. It's not about Brother Larry. It's not about Brother Gene. It's about him. But we better get concerned about the soul that's on the inside. This house that God has sanctified, this house sanctified is set apart. It's set aside. It's different. It's different from this world. We're a different people from this world. If He shut up the heavens, that it rained. It didn't rain, Brother Gene. The blessings didn't come to us, in other words. Where would we be at today? If my people, which are called by my name, are we called by His name? What is His name tonight? It's Jesus. We're, we claim that name. If we're going to wear that name, we need to represent Him, glory to God, to the fullest of our ability. We need to walk around here not with our heads hung down in shame, but we need to walk around with our heads hung high and say, I'm serving the, I'm a child of the high king. I'm the one that he's the one that done it all for me. Glory to God that one day I could go yonder and have a life eternal with him. Amen. If I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence, that's diseases. If I send diseases among my people, think about that. What a God we serve. He could, he could do it, Brother Gene. He could send disease right amongst His people. We say, well, God ain't going to do it. He's a God of mercy. But I read over in Hebrews 13 and 8 said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God that changes not. He's trying to get somebody's attention, glory to God, that they get on fire for Him. He said, if I shut up the heavens, that it rains not. Amen. And if, listen to what verse 14 says here. If my people, are we claiming to be His? I'm one of His, Brother Gene. I know I've heard you say you're one of His. Everybody in here, if you can raise your hand and say, I'm one of His. Alright, if we're one of His, listen to what He said here. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not seek Brother J.R., not seek Brother Larry, not seek Brother Eugene, but seek the face of the living God. Glory to God. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven and he'll heal our land. People don't want it no more. They want to live any kind of lifestyle and say it's all right. I'm still going to heaven. Glory to God, not the God that I serve. He won't allow me to do it. He won't allow you to do it. Then, what about when God brought the children of Israel up out of Egypt? Go around and begin to read in the five books, Genesis. Go start from Genesis. Go through there, the, the five first five that Moses wrote. See what happened to the children of Israel. Let me tell you something. God didn't do away with it. He didn't do away with the law. Glory to God. I was thinking about that when I went over in Romans chapter 6. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6 and 23. Through Him. It's not by my righteousness, but Gene, not the things that I do. But it was Him that came in me. That cleaned from the inside. It cleaned all the way out. It don't allow me to do the things like Brother Gene was saying. I can't go around cussing. I can't go around drinking. I can't go and do the things I used to do. Amen. Don't want to do it. But there's so many people got so many gods out there. So many gods out there, and when it comes time for this time, where we're out here tonight, you know what they want to do? Every excuse that they are. But then, let's this right here, then, there's another part. But then, when they need something from the Master, well, I'm wearing His name. Glory to God. I mean, they don't pray all week, they don't pray every morning, they don't pray every night. Glory to God. But then, when they get in trouble, 
hell. I'm telling you, glory to God, then is God going to heal you? People, I'm telling you, we better wake up. I under, look here. Let me get back here and read something to you. I don't know. I'm just minding God tonight. And Deuteronomy, look here, look, we need to take and read. Take, take this book, Brother Dave, I think, over our priest, taking your gun apart and putting it back together. A lot of us ain't got it to tuck apart. Because if there's some things in there, if we'd read and we say that we're His people, you know what? There's some things we wouldn't be walking in. There's some things that we wouldn't do, and I include me. Huh? There's some things that, that God's still working on me. I'm not Mr. Perfect, but He's still working on me, Brother Gene, that I'm going to make heaven my home. I made up my mind about 10 years ago that I'm going to make heaven my home, Jesus. It's going to take you. I know that He done it all for me. But glory to God, when, when we're down in this valley, when we get in valleys and everything, we don't need to stay in a valley. Look to Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, and come out of that valley in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't stay in it. Amen. When you keep praying in the valley, then He's going to hear you. We're going to keep praying on, then He's going to hear us. When we're down laying flat on our back, then He'll hear us. Huh? I don't have to wait till I get there. He can hear me when I'm standing on my feet. I don't have to wait till I get in a wheelchair somewhere. I'm not going in one of those, glory to God. But I'm just telling you, glory to God, the devil, he's cunning, he's crafty, he'll trick you. That's why this world's in the shape that it's in. There ain't enough truth being preached out of the pulpit. Then, man, I can't get away with that. Then will I hear from heaven. In Deuteronomy 28, it's talking about obedience and disobedience. Do you want to be obedient to Him or do you want to be disobedient? We get some blessings here by being obedient. I'm just going to read some of these here. And all these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of thy body. Listen to that one. Man, come on. Good. Man the Lord took me places this morning sat down on the porch. Blessed be the fruit of your body. And the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall there be the basket that, and thy store. Blessed shall there be when thou comest in and blessed shall there be when thou goest out. The Lord sh uh, shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This land right here, I know we're going back to the dust earth, but this land right here, he's blessed it, Brother Gene. He's blessed this right here. And glory to God, it's up to us to take care of it. But let's just right here be obedient to his word. I've, I've done more standing in 2015 than I've ever stood on this healing, on, on the things, glory to God, that corrupts this body. I've done more standing. I've, I've fit the devil, and I'm still going to keep right on fighting. Why? Because he wants to destroy God's people. But Jesus said, you don't have to have all these things. He said, all you got to do is just come to me. He said, I care for you. Just come to me. And I'll pour the blessings out. Glory to God. And then you'll just step out and you'll say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. This ain't no hard way. I used to think it was. But it's no hard way when I got anchored in Jesus. Let's get on down here to verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all His commandments, not mine, His, and His statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Well, what's the curses, Brother Larry? Cursed shall thou be in thy city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall the basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Uh-oh. Amen. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Why is the church age, I'll say it that way, not the true church, 
Why is the church age walking around sick? They, they always say if it's the Lord's will. Well, I read His will that He already healed us. I read His will that He healed me. I just got to believe it. Then. Did you get that? I read His will and all I got to do is believe it, Brother Red Jean. Then. Then. He, then I will hear from heaven. Yeah. Then I will come and heal your land. Yeah. Then there won't be no more cursings upon you. Yeah. Then you can walk in health. Yeah. Then you can do this. Uh, in the name of Jesus, because you are called by my name, you are my people, then I'm going to hear. Glory to God, when you humble yourselves and pray and seek my face, Jesus stood over in Matthew, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. People's got it backwards. They're seeking all these other things and then run to Jesus. Lord, Lord, you know I messed up. Will you help me again? Huh? We're serving a merciful God. Amen. Come on. But it's time and it's high time to wake out of the sleep. Come on. Amen. I'm not preaching on you. It's not me. It's the master that loves you. Brother Larry loves you. And I did. I got up on that parade. I was beside my building. And I said, Lord, please, if this is anything of me, move me out of the way. Move me out of the way. You say you're crazy, Brother Larry. No, I want to be saved. I want to be saved, Brother Gene. There's so much. Look here, there's so much going on through the land of, of when they get up, I say, yea, I say. And there ain't no God in it, Brother Gene. Lord, we need we need to get a revelation of this Jesus that we preach. I know that He's merciful. I know that He's kind. But when we get in that Bible, Brother Gene, and we begin to read. And, and God begins to open things up to us preachers. And we, we got we got to give it out to the people. Because you know what? I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand in judgment before Jesus. And I'm gonna be standing there and he's gonna say, I told you. I told you to take the message to the people. And glory to God, and now you didn't do it. What's gonna to happen to me? I'm gonna be cast out. I'm not gonna be his. So I can preach all I want to, but I'll not be his. You know why the, the children of Israel couldn't eat over into the promised land? Disobedient. Are we going to be His or not? Man, He's merciful. He's, he's full of tender mercies right now. What's it going to be? What would it be if you're standing there? He made His appearing. Just go into that. I know it may not be like this, but what, what would it be if you're standing there? Looking at the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Standing before Him. Just one thing just kept you out. You didn't listen to that. But J.R., I told you. But Lord, I was a little old preacher man come your way one night. He sent you a warning. Maybe warning after warning. You didn't hearken to it. Mer look here. Mercy will run out. One day after a while, it's going to run out, Brother Gene. Mercy's going to be over. He's walked in to the courtroom for me. I had nobody to plead my case. But man, Jesus walked in one day. Took my place. He said, that's one of mine. Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Take me. That's what Jesus done. Then, uh, when I get up in the morning, I'm not bragging on me, but when I get up, I go in my prayer closet, I pray. Throughout the, days, I'll say, throughout the day, I'll say a prayer. When I lay down of the night, before I even lay down, I say a prayer to the Master. And I'm not bragging on me, but, but Gene, I get everything fixed up with Him. I know when I call upon Him, when I call upon Him, then, huh? 
then it ain't that, that I don't want to call upon him for other people. But I'm trying to tell you something tonight that's going to help you. That you can get, you can pick yourself up, glory to God. You don't have to walk around. You won't have to get on the phone. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't want you to call me. But I'm just telling you that what if you call at my house or the pastor or somebody and ain't nobody there and you can't get a hold of them. What are you going to do? You need to get a hold of Jesus, glory to God. It needs to be you and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all fixed up. Me and Jesus, he's going to tell me what it's all about. I don't need nobody else but Gene Jesus to tell me what it's all about. Let me tell you, when I stay in contact with him one on one, then he will hear from heaven and he'll come and heal this land, glory to God. He'll come and all the things that the devil's trying to bring and curse us with, Jesus said he made me free. Glory to God, whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. The increase of thy kin. Is, you go, the, the increase of your kin is going to be cursed. And the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish thou perish quickly because of the weakness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me Lord Jesus church I want, I want to say I know Jesus said it he said I'll never leave you he said he'd never forsake us but J.R. But what about Brother Gene when we forsaked him? Walked away from him. Him standing there like this. Where are you going to? Man, I love you. I'm wanting to help you. Why are you walking away from me? Sometimes we say, well, things is getting a little bit hard. I can't do it. I can't either. We can't. But if we turn to Jesus... We gotta we gotta keep everything prayed up every day. I'm telling you, it's it's important. Prayer is the key in serving Jesus. Staying in contact with him right here. Je then then you know where he's at? He's just at the right here. Jesus. He's right there in my mouth, Brother Gene. He's right there on the inside of me. He's the one that's walking. Walking in my feet. Reaching out through my hands. Seeing through my eyes. Hearing through my ears. We are a representative for Jesus Christ. And we got to take, we got a, we got a duty that we got to do. People says people may say that we don't. We can just live any kind of lifestyle. I'm telling you, we can't live any kind of lifestyle. I can't live it. Not any kind of lifestyle. I can't live the way that I used to, Brother Jamie. When I came to Jesus, you know what he done? He began, I couldn't go around saying the, the cuss words no more. I couldn't turn the bottle up no more. Glory to God, I couldn't do some things that I used to do. But you know what Jesus done? He put a he put a clean heart in me. He gave me a clean slate. And as I walk down this way, have I faltered? Have I messed up? Have I failed? Yes, I have. But I've got back up. I didn't quit. Glory to God. I kept on going. I kept praying. I kept saying, Lord Jesus, help me. You can be where everybody else is and higher. I'm nothing big. Thank you, Jesus. I'm nothing big without Him. I feel, here lately I have, I felt the least among everybody in the building. But Jesus is coming back after a church that has made itself ready. When He says then, look here, List this in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin. What is wages? You're going to get a payday. You're fixing to get a payday. The wages of sin is death. That's the payday, is death. But the gift of God, the payday to that, is eternal life. Just serving Him. Say, Lord, what will you have me to do today? Not what will... 
Everybody else down the road had me to do. I'm not seeking to please man. I thank God for Sunday school this morning. What just a few little words of encouragement to help someone. And I thank God for it. Where, where He's brought me from. Church where He's taken me to. Look and see where He's brought you from. Do you want to throw everything away? Throw everything away. And spend eternity with the devil. I'm not going to. Not for nobody but Jason. I was thinking we're just about through. I've had a lot more on my mind, but the Lord's just I love everybody in here. But I want you to take to take to heart. Not because Brother Larry said it. I'll be obedient to the Lord. Take then into consideration. If you're if you're claiming to say that you're one of his, Lord, how important it is. That's why I go so hard, that's why I do what I do. I love you, and I truly do. Sometimes flesh may rise up, but does that mean that I don't love you? No. I love you. But we got to take and do what this right here says. I include me. If my people. Which are called by my name. How are we called by his name? Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I got one more place. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read. And we're going to ask the saviors to come back. It'll be too late in the end if we take God's word lightly. I know you've heard this many times. But we're going to read Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, and that the body of sin may be destroyed, that henceforth, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. 
but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. List this, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you obey it in the lust thereof, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Question. What then? Shall we sin because we are under grace? Under, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Question mark. It is asked the question. God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself service to obey, his service you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as yet, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members service to righteousness and to holiness. For when we were the servants of sin, you were freed from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become service to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But just remember then, because if we are His people, we can't do what we, we want to do. I can't do what I want to do. And you're serving the same God, you say, well, Brother Larry, I wouldn't say that, but if you're serving the same God, I'm serving. Filled with the same Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost, every one of us, Brother Gene. He won't allow me to do it, he ain't going to allow nobody else to do it. He's the same God. And I love him. And I love everybody here tonight. Love everybody here. But I I came to please him, came on business for the king. There it is, I wrote that down. Been probably three weeks ago then. The Lord dealt with me on this then. He's got so many messages. I don't know when I'll get to preach them. Don't know where I'm going to get to preach them. But it's so important. And I believe this year, we, we started out such so good this year. And even I, I'll go ahead and say, I, I like confession. Even I have let down some, Gene. Not that I've let down, I'm a praying. There's some things that we slack in. And as they come and say, I'm going to give an altar call. If you want to be one of His, all you got to do is come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and say, Lord, I want to start following You. I want to start walking in Your ways. I want to start doing what You would have me to do. Because it ain't about me. I'm going to keep saying it. Church, it's not about us. That's right. Amen. It's about Jesus. And He came that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And it's not His will that any would perish. Not His will, but that all that would come to repent. Say, Brother Larry, is it just a one time thing? You got to repent? No. I've had to come back and repent, Brother Gene. 
If I'd ask the Lord, forgive me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. But if we keep going in our way and say, I'm all right, I don't have to go to that altar. This altar, oh, it needs to wear out by the saints. But if you're lost in this building tonight, if you're not where you should be, I beg you, in the name of Jesus, to come this way right here. Kneel down. Every message that comes our way, don't go insane. Every message that comes our way, every message that comes through here, I apply it to my life. I say, Lord, anything in there that's not like it, get it out.
Yeah.